so here we are everyone in the Volvo S80 V8 for our first drive and the first thing which surprises me is not the sound or the power in fact there are a few things which sit above that before I even get onto the noise and power so let's let's discuss those firstly now the one of the biggest standouts for this for me is the ride oh my it is Oh, head and heels below, above anything I've really driven. I can't recall the last time I've been something so comfortable and so pleasing to just to ride over anything. Coming out of that Porsche Kynex uh, ownership, which you guys may be familiar with if you've been watching the channel for a long time, you'll know that I was, I had hatred for those 22-inch wheels that car was fitted with, and it's just completely hampered with the ride quality so this time i've done it properly um, i bought this s80 with 17 inch wheels and i am reaping the rewards i can tell you that for sure this ride is what i imagine driving over a cloud would feel like i'll put it to you this way in my town there are many speed bumps and when i drive my c63 i will always take the longest detour to ensure I do not go over those speed bumps because it's painful, it's incredibly uncomfortable and it just, it's not forgiving. Whereas in this, I would happily face any obstacle this car would throw at me because it just simply glides and goes over any obstacles with relative ease. However, where the S80 V8 definitely excels in ride comfort, the same cannot be said for the steering. The steering can only be described as it's, it's wayward, it's non-communicative, it's, it's incredibly light. In fact, I think one of my rabbits or puppy's digits could steer the, the, the steering because it is unbelievably light. It's ridiculously light. It's, it's, it's good for maneuvering and it's okay, but for spirited driving or just feedback, this car has absolutely none of it. Just going around corners, this car this inspires me no confidence at all as well as these seats they are supremely comfortable but when you take this car around a really harsh bend you are kind of sliding out of the seat at the same time but i can easily forgive the s80 v8 for that because this clearly wasn't what it was designed for it was designed to keep you in supreme comfort and get you around to your destination in a very easy surge of waft like this. Oh, yeah. Another observation I've had whilst driving this is quite an odd one. Driving this makes me feel generous. It makes me feel kind. It makes me feel forgiving, successful and opulent. I feel no sense of urgency to drive this fast. I may have a waft of power at my disposal, but I feel no compulsion of using it. I was driving through Aylesbury the other day, it was completely rammed with traffic and I had places to be, but at no given moment was I normally like my normal self where I was trying to rush through, not letting anyone out. In fact, most of the cars that wanted to give, well, I was trying to give way to, I, I wanted them to come out for some reason. I just felt overly kind and I cannot explain why, but I feel like this, Ace, this S80 V8 has given me this new lease of kindness and um, togetherness, I don't know what to really explain it as. It, the car just has a certain charm about it. It's very, very weird. If only everyone had a Volvo, I think the roads would just be a very harmonious place to be. But yeah, putting this car through these paces on this road right now, like, I feel like the car doesn't like it. The roads are relatively cold and damp and somewhat icy, but even when I drove it on a mild day and a much warmer day, it just feels so out of place going around corners. Maybe some modifications can do that, but I have no, <laughs> I have absolutely no sense of where the wheels are going and I have no confidence inspired driving through these roads very fast. I'm gonna take it quite easy around here. But you may recognize this uh, road I go down quite often in my videos and it is horrid driving the Porsche Cayenne and the C63 down here. I have to drive and crawl through here at very low speeds, annoying all the locals. 
but right now I'm just cruising and simply gliding all over these bumps. It's glorious. Right, let's talk about the exciting stuff now. So let's get the elephant out of the room, the sound. So the sound is ridiculous. Um, I'll just let the soundtrack speak for itself. The noise this car makes is just biblical. I can only imagine what this car could sound like with one of like the resonators removed. That would make the car sound unbelievable. And better still, it's coming from a Volvo. The just combinations is just ridiculous. I can't believe such an existence is created. The, the, the noise coming out of this Volvo it just doesn't match, but it's, it's a perfect combination. It is, this car is so me. I love the noise this car makes. So let's talk about the biggest elephant in the room, and that is, of course, the power plant underneath the bonnet, which is the 4.4 litre V8. And that is helped, developed by a company who make motorbikes and pianos, which, of course, is Yamaha. They helped develop this with Volvo, and this is the result. We have roughly around 315 horsepower at our disposal and around 440 new means of torque. I think it's about 325 foot-pounds altogether. And that will propel this luxury barge to around six, not the 0 to 60 sprint in about six seconds, which isn't overly quick. And that is because it is quite heavy, not too heavy, but fairly heavy. It is around 1800 kilos, but I can forgive that because the way the car delivers its power kind of propels you and pulls you towards speed and you don't really notice it. It's a very lovely sensation. And if you ever find yourself on the Autobahn, then you can get this up to around 155 miles an hour as well, which is a very respectable speed. And if you are also not aware, this is, has uh, an all-wheel drive system. Um, I'm not too clued up about it, but what I can tell you is putting your foot down immediately from just the get-go, from standstill, the response is incredible. That's instantaneous. The Porsche Cayenne Turbo I had, there was a bit of a delay, whereas this, I remember I put my foot down on the test drive and it, it blew me away. Like The instant response is just, ridiculous it just completely propels you and puts you back in your chair I, if more so the passenger at the time um, who I was buying the car off he was kind of pinned back in his seat and I was like oh I'm terribly sorry I didn't realize how how like propulsion there would be from a, the standstill it's quite ridiculous whilst nothing's around me I'm just gonna just quickly floor it off the line I'm gonna experience you can experience with me just how fast it is off the line it's quite crazy so here we go <laughs> oh, can you see how much that threw me back into my seat that that is it's got so much get-go like I can't put it into words I'm speechless that is unbelievable track it's traction and Prints my seat, I couldn't believe it. But yeah, the, the, the car, apart from when it's off the line, the way the car delivers its power is just effortless and smooth. It's, it just gets up to speed without you realizing it, but it doesn't, once the initial shove is over, you don't really feel like you're going really fast, but when you look at the speedo, you are climbing very, very illegal speeds very quickly. Speaking of effortless, we have the Azen six-speed automatic gearbox down here, which is very smooth. It gets through gears without you realizing it. It's a very lovely gearbox. I've never experienced this gearbox before, but it's very good. And you can, if you want to have a bit more engagement, you can flick it to the side like so and bring it down a few gears if you so wish to do so. And you want to shift it it's not instantaneous so it's nothing like you get on a flappy paddle gearbox 
or a DCT gearbox and all those sort of things. This is a very kind of dim-witted slow gearbox so to speak but that's not what the car is all about. The car is just about wafting and getting up to speed discreetly and just having a bit of a noise here and there. There's some nice horses there with their nice cool jackets on as well. But yes I can really forgive the gearbox being not overly quick in the shifts because that's not what the nature of the car is all about. It's just it's meant to be a very serene wafting experience and I love it for that. But I do love how smooth the gear changes is and it's not jerky, it's just very seamless. That's this car as a package I think, it's just seamless. Another thing we can quickly mention is the size. Um, I did not realise how big this car was until I put it in my garage. I thought this would be just a, like a 3 series size, but in fact it is more of an E-Class or a 5 series size and it is big. And when I mean big, I checked out the dimensions of my Porsche Cayenne Turbo and compared it to the S80. And if the figures are correct, this is not only wider, it is also longer than the Cayenne, which is ridiculous. It doesn't feel that, it really doesn't. But apparently so, it is longer and wider than the Cayenne. And I don't know if I believe it, but there you go. It is a very big, big car than you actually expect. And here we are creeping through these very sleepy rural villages and the exhaust is next to non-existent. It's very quiet. And that's the, the lovely um, the feeling this car gives because the seats are just supremely comfortable, it's really quiet in here, my exhaust is dialed down. Yeah, overall, I am absolutely besotted with this purchase of car. Um, I'm, I couldn't have chosen a better car, especially during winter with the all-wheel drive system as well, although it handles absolutely terrible. I am absolutely besotted, like I said. Anyway guys, I am going to leave that there. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see further with the Volvo S80 V8, then please do comment down below and I will be sure to hopefully make a video on whatever you request. So, um, thank you very much for watching and please do give it a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already because I believe 95% of my viewers uh, aren't subscribed and who would wanna miss out on future um, S80 V8 content so yes please do subscribe if you haven't done so already but other than that thank you very much for watching and bye for now I almost forgot this might be the last video I make before Christmas hence why I'm wearing a Christmas jumper so uh, I wish you a very splendid and lovely Christmas and a lovely festive season um, I don't know whether because I think the next video I was going to upload was a Sunday, but I think that's on Christmas Day, so I don't know whether I'm going to be uploading on that day. So if I don't upload before then, yes, very, very Merry Christmas to you all, and I wish you a very lovely season's greetings, and maybe I'll see you in New Year or before, who knows. But yes, other than that, thank you very much for watching, and bye for now.